Alright, this is the book of Jubilees, also known as the Little Genesis. And I wanted to share some information from this book concerning the ancestor, one of the ancestors of the, the great Hebrew Israelites. Because unbeknownst to me, when I was reading this book, I recently found out that one of the sons of Shem married one of the daughters of Japheth. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you in just a little bit, so bear with me. Alright, so let's go there now. Alright, this is the book of Jubilees, chapter 8. Alright. Here it mentions Arpashat, one of the sons of Shem. Here's the name of his wife. Alright, and he had a son with this woman named Canaan, or Kenan. Here they have the name spelled K A I. N A M, Canaan, with an M instead of an N in the end. All right, but anyways, it gives us some interesting information concerning this individual. All right, it says how he found a transcription that belonged to the Watchers, some of their omens. He wrote it down and kind of got in trouble for it, not right away, but anyways, this individual, Canaan. He took for himself a wife, as it says here, in verse 5. His wife's name was Melka, the daughter of Madai, the son of Japheth. And in the fourth year, he had a son with this Japhetic woman called Shelah. This it has the same name as the third son of Judah with the Canaanite woman, Shelah. All right, so, okay, so this individual, Kenam, was a son of Arpashat. Arpashat was a son of Shem. So Kenam was a descendant of Shem. Shem is the great ancestor of the Hebrew Israelites. So Kenam took this woman, Melka, for a wife, daughter of Madai. Madai was a son of Japheth, the older brother of Shem. And in the fourth year, this woman gave birth to a, a son named Shelah. Alright. So he grew up and he took for himself a wife named Moak, the daughter of Cassette, his father's brother. Alright. So this woman was a daughter of his uncle. Alright, and look what it says here. She bare him a son in the fifth year. So now Shelah grows up, marries Moak, and they have a kid, and his they call his name Eber. Eber is, let me zoom in, Eber is one of the ancestors of the Hebrew Israelites. In other words, this, this is the lineage of Christ, right? So, if Japheth, one of the daughters of Japheth, married into the line of Shem, and... They come together, and that is a sanctioned line for the Hebrew Israelites, because they remember this Japhetic woman is a grandmother or great grandmother to Eber. So that means that you have colored Israelites. Might find some Israelites with uh, colored eyes, blonde hair. Who knows? Because remember, Japhet is. Uh, the, the great forefather of people that are colored eyed and blonde hair and one of these women married into the line of Shem. Shem are the red skinned uh, long slick hair of uh, Asiatic peoples right so they came together and produced a particular lineage where the Israelites sprung from so who's to say that you know Israelites might not look like a regular Japhetic uh, person because they carry those genes to the mom to this mom right here, um, Melka, you know. So you obviously had white-skinned Israelites. Not all of them are going to be dark. It, it's all in the genes, but yeah, just wanted to point that out because, wow, I was shocked when I read this. So I guess now when you read those stories about the Anglo-Saxons and all these false uh, cult groups, you know, you're probably like, ah, no, that's not, 
they're, they're not Israelites. They may, they may well be Israelites. We don't know. You know, some of the stuff is not accurate, but some of them may be Israelites. So we cannot dismiss that. So I think it's very interesting. That's why you have the confusion with all this. Oh no, that the people, this people are Israel. No, this people are Israel. But unless you know who married who and how is it tied in, you know, you can't really tell who's who, you know, even by looking at them out really. So I just wanted to bring this up because I know there might be some Japhetic brothers and sisters watching thinking, you know, well, what about us? You know, well, yeah, one of your great uh, ancestors uh, married into the line of Shem and spawned Eber. Remember, Eber is uh, a dis uh, descendant of Shem. And from Eber came the Hebrew Israelites. This is a lineage of Christ. So there, you may see some white-skinned uh, Hebrew Israelites with blonde hair, blue eyes. Who knows? Might be a white skin with dark hair. Might be uh, dark-skinned with uh, well, dark hair, just looking just like the great Shem. I don't know. So... Just wanted to share that because I, I blew my mind when I came into this information, and also this individual is mentioned in uh, what is this Luke? Luke chapter three and verse thirty-six. There he is. Here they have him spelled C A I N A N. They have an N instead of an M, as in the Book of Jubilees. It just replaced the N with an M, so it's Canaan. Here it has it's Canaan, and it says that he was a son of Arpashat. Arpashat was a son of Shem. Again, we just read in the book of Jubilees that Arpashat gave birth to a son called Canaan. So he is mentioned in Luke chapter 3 and verse 36. He's a descendant of Adam, and he's from the lineage of Christ. So this woman... This woman, uh, Melka, was a daughter of Japhet. And it's a union between uh, the people of Japhet and Shem coming together and producing the line of the Hebrew Israelites. So, you know, like I said, man, they're all, they're all different colors, like a great rainbow, you know. It wouldn't surprise me if you have a, a Hem ma marrying into um, the line of Shem. And that's what you get. You have the three brothers to, together, different colors within uh, what we know as the 12 tribes of Israel. So all this racism has got to stop. You know, just do your research. And it doesn't matter even if you come from the line or not. Like I said, what matters is if you are converted spiritually. You're all in, not halfway in. All right? So, Shalom.